out. Um, we really appreciate your coming out on Memorial Day weekend to support this effort. Um, thank you also for signing up. And um, my hope is that next year we can really be organized throughout the year so that we can connect to other events in the community and really increase our numbers. So, so thank you for signing up and for volunteering your time. Appreciate that very much. I'd like to thank my daughter Allison who helped work on it. Thank you. And um, I'd like to introduce you now to Elizabeth Henderson, and then we are also going to hear from Debbie Jennings, who heads up GMO Free Rochester. So, Elizabeth. Hi everybody, I'm Elizabeth Henderson. I'm an organic farmer in this area. My farm is Peacework. We're the oldest CSA in most of New York. We're one of the two oldest. Um, and I am on the board of the Northeast Organic Farming Association of New York, and I do policy work. And one of our main efforts is to pass the legislation this year in New York State to label GMOs. So I would like all of you to be sure to take this flyer home with you. And this week, to call your assembly person and your senator. If it's funky, we want to tell funky that he should listen to consumers and not the Farm Bureau. If it's robot, say thank you. Robot has been a sponsor of this bill for a long time. Ranzenhofer needs the same message as Funky. And then in the assembly, Harry Bronson says he'll vote for this if it comes to the floor. So tell him he'd better vote for it and help him get it to the floor. David Gant hasn't said anything, so we don't know where he stands one way or the other. Um, Mark Johns is signed on, so he's your representative say thank you. Peter Lawrence, Morelli, and No Jay haven't said anything. Morelli says he'll vote if it comes to the floor, that he'll vote for it, but he really needs a good heavy push from people. So if Morelli is your representative, and he's a big Democrat around here, he should be one of the sponsors of this bill. And the way it stands right now is we actually have enough votes in both the Assembly and the Senate to pass this GMO labeling bill in New York State. The leadership is not bringing it to the floor for a vote because a lot of the or there are something like, we figure, 10 of the people who've said they'll vote for it who really don't want to have to vote at all. They don't want to be seen voting against it, so they'd rather not vote. So we are trying to push the leadership to bring this bill for a vote to the floor in the next three weeks, and then it's the end of the session. So I'm going to ask you all, if you have anybody that you can give these leaflets to one explains all the details of the GMO labeling bill and the other is a list Does of everyone have one or can you pass these out? Sure. All right. And the other is a list of the representatives in this area with their phone numbers. So please help us make your phone call this week. Yes. What Liz was saying, the most important thing is to get the labeling through, and we're close. Uh, Connecticut's passed a bill, uh, but it has trigger clauses in it, so it can't go into effect until there's five states. Maine's passed a bill, it's the same thing. Vermont has passed a bill, no trigger clauses are being sued by Monsanto on the Farm Bureau. Um, and Rhode Island has a bill, I've been in Providence, and Albany, we're doing good, and I don't know we're at the cusp in, in the New York bill. And I, I'm not sure if this one will have trigger clauses or not, or if it'll be a full-on bill like Vermont, do you know? It does not have a trigger. Okay, so, it's so it would be just so wonderful if we could do this, and that, that's the only way we can change it. You've gotta get one step, you have to inter interact with the legislative people, we're the, their constituents. They have to know this experiment has to stop now because it's, I mean, they have buried the records. There's a really great book that um, Stephen Drucker just put out. He's an attorney. He's done like five years of research 
It's called Alter Genes Twisted Truth. And it is powerful. He's suing the FDA because they buried all, all the truth of what these are. And, and it's not just the genetic engineering, it's also the uptick of glyphosate. And we, we've got so many allergies and autoimmune diseases in this country. Our whole healthcare system is going to collapse on itself. And I just think since the genetic engineering and food were, I mean, there's a big thing with vaccination and there's other things that are happening that can be causes. It's a perfect storm. But food is so essential, we've just got to get it back to, get it to organic, get it where it was post-World War II. They just used all the chemicals from the, from the war days and brought them over and somehow chemical companies are running our food, our food system, it's just, it's crazy. Does it make sense to anybody? No. <laughs> oh. So I, I, I post up to GMO Free Rochester on Facebook. Tina, who was here, she kind of runs the, she's involved with a lot of other movements with animal rights and with the Vegetarian Society. And but she, she and I work really closely with um, getting the word out to Rochester. I've got cards for the website. And, and I post up about the TPP too, because that's a big one, because if the TPP goes through, it just went through the Senate this week, if it goes through the House, Obama's going to sign it into legislation, and that's going to that's going to really hurt our national sovereignty. It's and they won't have to label anything. We won't even have to know the country of origin. I mean, it's a disaster, and we've got to we've got to stop that. That's so big. So, but we're the only ones that can do it. The corporations aren't going to do it, and the legislative people. There's there's some good there's some good ones in there, for sure. But I don't think they're. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah.